What's up investors? Today I'm going to be talking about Regents Financial Corporation, ticker symbol RF. And as with many stocks, the story begins in the price. I'm going to do an overview of the company using stockanalysis.com. I'm not affiliated, I'm just using it because it's a free tool. You can go on there right now and do any kind of numbers research that you want. For the most part, figures are pretty accurate, unlike some sites, so I really like to use it. Now, I personally have sold 10 puts, strike price 16 for this company. I'm getting ready to buy it around the 16 level, $16 level. And it's a high hurdle because right now, cash is paying quite a bit, right? Robinhood just increased its money market dividend, basically, to 4.65%, I believe, after the Federal Reserve announced that they're going to be raising the rates. So in response, all the brokerages are raising their money market account yield. And Robinhood is um, the highest paying one, actually. So there you go. If you hate the company, it's too bad because they're paying the highest. Now, looking at the price, this company has been around forever. They experienced a really big substantial boom in the residential market in the early 2000s to 2007 when it began falling and it dropped all the way from 24 to $3 per share. And then it's been a, a kind of a steady climb up again. 2020 it dropped just like anything else. The stock price got halved and then experienced a major boom during the retail craze in the 2021 um, period, late 2020 and all of 2021. Recently though, it's been hit again from 24 to 16.4 where it sits today because of the drama associated with the regional banks. Now this stock is Regions um, Bank, which is, it's a regional bank. I was looking at regional banks trying to figure out which one is the most sound and which one I'm going to try to put some money in in order to mitigate some risk that regional banks tend to have. I didn't want something overly indebted. I didn't want something that had too much uh, duration risk and I wanted something that could meet deposit outflow. Now this company has experienced about $5 billion of uh, deposit outflow and we may or may not look at that. I'm going to look at the 10Q, which is their quarterly report, and that has data from the 10K, which is the yearly report, <laughs> in there. So we can contrast and compare how uh, the company is moving quarter over quarter. Um, there's some year over year data in there as well. But I'll show you some inter interesting things from the report in case you're not following and you missed it. Um, but first, before we go into that, I'm going to do just like an overview of the company to try to figure out, is this company going to be at risk from the same type of sickness that caught so many banks um, by surprise? Do they have their assets locked up or are they available to sell? Can they meet deposit outflow, deposit demand? Is it a sound bank? Is it in under risk of going under? The answer to that is no. Okay. This company is firing on all cylinders, although it has slowed down a little bit, but it has shifted its um, you know, growth to more earning power. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. The first thing I like to look at here at stockanalysis.com, which is a free website, I'm not affiliated, um, is this little square here to just to give you an idea of what's going on in the company. The blue bar is the revenues and the green bar is the earnings. So this company's earning money, which is great. I like anything that earns money. So it's already a plus. This is the stock price here. The max um, experienced a boom over here in 2000, during the real estate boom in the early 2000s to 2007. And then steady grind, topped out at 23 something here. And then boom, back down to 16.4 around of 0.4 in March around the recent uh, deposit crisis that we're having due to high rates and whatnot. Um, at a glance, the figures look pretty good. 
and the market cap is 15.3 billion revenue of 7 billion income of uh, over 2 billion which is fantastic peer ratio of 7 and a dividend a fat dividend of 4.7 percent actually it's a little bit higher today uh, but at 16 that dividend will be even higher which is higher than the hurdle rate of well my hurdle rate <laughs> currently which is if i just leave the cash sitting in the uh, money market accounts which is 4.65 percent so it's going to be over that which is great um that dividend seems to be pretty safe you'll see how the dividend's done over the years in fact why don't we go into the dividend right now so 4.7 payout ratio is 32.6 percent which is you know very good it's a third of what they make dividend growth here if you want to just scroll i'm going to scroll down here and this is the cash amount of dividend that they've been paying out each each quarter and uh it's ever rising ever since 2013 the data only goes back to 2013 i'm sure is the case before that as well i can't comment about 2008 2009 period probably stopped dividends you know the stock fell quite a bit but then it's been rebuilding and you know it was three cents and then you know 6.5 cents 14 cents 15.5 cents 17 cents now it's 20 cents per share so it's climbed quite a bit over the last 10 years and if this continues you know if it if it doubles in the next 10 years this uh, company would have been a really really good investment um, so that's the dividend let's go to the financials take a look at more in depth what this company is all about okay <laughs> see where it stands with its monies and then i actually, actually have something very interesting on the 10q i want to show you this company is basically stealing money from its <laughs> depositors um i hope it's you know i hope it um doesn't last because i want consumers not to get ripped off but as long as it lasts this company is making a ton of money so we can't ignore it uh, you'll see what i mean later revenues i'm gonna go quarterly because i like definition so here's what's been happening with the revenues over the last 10 years or so um, they're, they've been flat, but in 2021, 2022, with the new influx of cash, the revenue is actually increased. The next tab that uh, we're going to look at is straight up net income. Net income has been steadily increasing. And then, of course, 2020 and then experienced the boom around the real estate market. And now it's pretty elevated still um, in 2023 this is they just reported their earnings uh, a couple of days ago a few days ago and there we go it's a pretty strong quarter earnings wise on over half a billion dollars per quarter that's huge that's huge shares outstanding they have been reducing the share count over the years They've, it's kind of flattened out now but they're still reducing it by a very small amount. So they're doing share buybacks, which is great for people who want larger percentage ownership of the company. Profit margin here is pretty steady, with the with exception of the one-off in 2020. Actually, it's kind of elevated here, 32.38. It's not shabby at all. Statistics. Immediately, we look at the market cap at 15.3 compared to the enterprise value of 10.8, which would tell you they have about four and a half billion dollars in cash. If we scroll down here to the balance sheet, you'll see that net cash is 4.53 billion. It used to be a bit higher when I first looked at the stock a week or two ago, but I see that they've been going down in cash and actually up in debt. And that's a questionable move here. I am not sure why they purchased this high percentage debt high yield debt um, you see when we go into the 10q what 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 I mean by that the percentages are really high even though it's not that much compared to their um, assets and other liabilities it's not a huge percentage but but these billions of dollars I have no idea why they did it maybe they're afraid of a real big like outflow risk and and so they wanted to get their um, their hands on some debt at any cost but i think that yield cost is way too high and it's dragging their statistics down 
So I'm not sure that that's necessarily a good move. If you know a lot about the company, please comment below and tell me why they made that move. I'm very interested because other, bef before that move, their metrics look so good. Um, look at these EV because I'm going to go EV because they have some cash on hand. The PE ratios and stuff, you can look at them too, but like price to free cash flow is 5.85. EV to free cash flow though is 4.12 and used to be even better before this last earnings report because of the switch from net cash to, to, to total debt. I don't, I don't like it. But anyways, moving on um, with, with <clears throat> the review here. <clears throat> so Regions Financial Corporation. Oh yeah, sorry, I don't do any edits, edits. So if I, you know, say a uh home -huh, or, you know, you're just going to have to live with it. That's the risk you take when you talk to people. So that's how I do it out here. Okay. Now, this is a bank that provides a lot of loans to other banks, to corporate, to corporations, industrial players, uh, commercial real estate uh, developers and consumers, um, mortgages, consumer loans. They do it all, basically. So they take a lot of money in <clears throat> and a lot of money out. Um, I couldn't find anything super crazy about this company when I was reading through all it does. But so I just went straight to the thank you here. And this is the crazy thing that I'm going to show you here. It's going to be kind of hard to see um, because it's cut out on the left what I'm reading. But basically what you were going to be reading here are these numbers, which is their assets. Okay, these are their assets. So the first number here is federal funds sold and securities purchased under agreement to, to resell. And that's a mind-boggling $32 billion. Okay, which is paying them 2.33%. Not too shabby. That's all right. How about this one? Debt securities. Okay. This is the total amount of income that, is, that it's giving them. $187 million, right? From these $32 billion. And then we got $7 uh, million coming in from loans held for its for sale at 7.23%. And then the big one is loans net of unearned income. So this is $1.373 billion at 5.68% on average. That's huge. That's big income right there. And if you want to compare it to the previous um, March of 2022, the difference is, is very big. I mean, the percentages are higher um, across the board. I mean, these these six million dollars. So, I'm sorry, six billion dollars here, six and a half billion dollars from interest-bearing deposits in other banks went from 0.2 percent to 4.49 percent. Enormous difference. Enormous difference. Um, other earning assets stayed about the same, but a big increase here. And their major part of their asset uh, portfolio here, the loans, went from averaging 4.07 to 5.68%. So you see here, these are the total number of um, assets held, total earning assets. It used to be actually a bigger number a year ago. At 145 billion dollars, 146. Now it's only 137 and a half. However, you see that they're making a lot more out of it. They're making 1.65 billion versus they used to make only 1 billion, 1.06 billion um, last March in 2022. So big difference there. But if we scroll down here, these are actually their liabilities. And this is where I think they're cheating the system a little bit. I mean, not literally, but 
figuratively cheating the system. So this is what they're paying out basically, all right? Their liabilities, what are they paying out? So these are the numbers of actual millions they're paying out in, uh, they're getting paid in, and this is what's coming out in millions. All right, so 4 million, 54 million, 91 million, et cetera, 30 million. Okay, a total of 224 million they're paying out. And what's coming in is 1.65 billion. All right, so this is a huge spread. So how is this spread being achieved? Well, let's take a look. These dudes, Regions Bank, guys, has savings of 15 billion in there. And they only have to pay 4 million in interest to keep it. Their rate is 0.11. They're paying 0.11 on their savings. This is like conditioning, all right? I don't know how long this is going to last. It's like uh, having your money in, you know, Wells Fargo or something in Bank of America where they just still give you zero interest rate on your deposits. So 15.4 in savings, a billion in savings, only 0.11%. Let's take a look at the next one. Interest bearing checking. Okay, so they have a checking account that gives a little bit of interest. How much this interest does that give? 0.89, not even 1%. Um, money market account, $32.5 billion. Huge amount, huge amount. Only costing them 91 million. Percent, 1.13. In a money market account, I just mentioned money market account, and this is this March, ending this March. I just mentioned Robinhood is giving you 4.65% on your money market account. These guys are only giving you 1.13. Time deposit, a real steal. 6.8 billion, only 1.8% they're giving out. Craziness. The figures from last March are more understandable because rates were much, much, much lower back then. So these are very, very near zero rates here. We got um, 0.13 for savings, which is actually ironically higher than the savings percentage they're paying now. Um, they're paying interest bearing checking of only 0.03%. And then they were paying time deposits 0.47%. That's nothing. It's zero. So here's where it gets a little bit weird. This is where I think the mistakes are coming in. Or I don't know if they're mistakes. This is what I want to know. I mean, if they're taking on some high interest debt, okay, and I can't figure out why. I think they have enough uh, money to meet withdrawals, right? People demanding their cash out of the bank. They've lost about, I think, $5 billion from what I can say, from what I can see, so, um, but it's, it's really a breeze, they haven't had any trouble with it, uh, and they still have like $5 billion on cash, right, actually they have $8 billion cash, and now they've taken on some debt, so net $5 billion, but I don't understand why they're taking on that debt, um, so here it is, you know how they're only paying 1.8, 1.1, or 0.89% on all their deposits, well, they decided for to, to take some short bur short term borrowings at a rate of four point nine two. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. And it's costing them five million to service it. I have no idea why they want to do that. Why do they have four hundred million in short term debt that they're paying five percent on? Why do they get such a bad deal? And long term oh I guess it's not that bad deal considering current overnight rates but but then look at this one long-term borrowings the, keep in mind the rates are inverted right now right this is long-term borrowing here 2.286 billion dollars cost them 40 million to service at 6.91 why is this rate so damn high i don't understand i just don't understand so what do they need this 2.286 billion and in, in why do they take out that debt? Don't know. 
So maybe maybe there is pressure from um, the deposit outlays, and they feel like they need to borrow some money so they can meet some immediate demand. But they have a lot of securities held for sale. I mean, like they have you know four hundred million here, but I checked you know further up the ten uh, Q here, and they have they have actually a lot of stuff they can sell down in order to meet any kind of deposit demand. So it's not really an issue. So I'm trying to figure out what is going on with this bank. But for right now, what I'm seeing is a safety when it comes to uh, their dividend, right? Their earnings, as long as the situation stays the way it does with uh, them paying very little interest on their depositors, um, they're going to be banking in some major you know, margin there major difference between what they're paying out and what they're taking in. And uh, maybe that's the reason why there's so many people taking out deposits because they're trying to look for deals elsewhere. However, they, t they have a lot of um, commercial clients and, and they've gone heavier into the commercial and industrial side of things lately. There was a breakdown here. I'm going to try to find it here. Where was it? 32... These reports are so damn big. Was it 32? Um, where it has a breakdown of what kind of industries they're in. And it was actually pretty well diversified in their with their industrial clients. It didn't seem it didn't seem like they were taking too much of a risk in any particular area. But anyways, that was the only thing that really struck me on the um, on the company. Other than that, it looks it looks pretty good. Here, I'll give you a little rundown of what their cash looks like. Let's go to quarterly so we can get that definition. So here's their cash. It looks like it's been going down. For me, it's it looks like they want to hang around that four. A billion dollar in cash and this money is just melting away through dividends or through whatever else they want to do they loan it out etc so they're left with 8.83 right now I'm, I'm guessing they're gonna gravitate towards that four billion dollar mark so we got another four million to blow um, then we got total debt which is currently at four billion they like to keep that around five it seems like five or six so it looks like we're going to be tacking on two more billion dollars of debt. I mean, they they held it at 2.3 for a while during the good old days of real estate boom. But now things are returning to normal, it appears. And so this metric is going to look really bad for a while. The net cash versus debt growth. Uh, they've really accelerated that to the downside. I think it's they're just trying to normalize their balance sheet, but to what end? Like that's what I'm really trying to understand. Yes, I'm getting this company because I know it's going to pay out dividends for quite some time, but the price may continue to go down if this trend continues. I just don't know what the benefit is. And again, ask for a third time if you know what the benefit is of taking all this high interest, uh, 2.4 billion dollars of debt, and just to pay 40 million. An interest um, let me know <laughs> like I would really like to know but having said that I still have uh, puts strike price 16 and if it goes through I'm going to be an owner of a thousand shares a Regions Bank which I may or may not sell calls against I may just keep it for the dividend until either I find a good spot to sell or I'm forced to sell we'll see <laughs> We'll see how it goes. All right, so that's what I'm doing with the company. That's my opinion. Hope is, it, this gives you a better picture as to what the company's doing. And if, again, if you know more than me, uh, please share down in the comments below about this company. All right, thanks. Peace out.